Amen. Isaiah chapter 57. We'll read some scripture this morning. I want to preach to you this morning on the longest word in the Bible. Do you know really, no kidding, lengthwise, the longest word in the Bible is over there, I believe, in, uh, in 8 and 1. You don't have to look at it right now. Really, the longest word in the Bible is Meher Shalel Hashbaz. <laughs> and that's some fellow back yonder. That's, I think it's about got every word in alphabet in it, every alphabet almost. Got a lot of them. But um, that's in Isaiah 8 1. The real longest word in the Bible or longest word in the world is in Isaiah 57, verse 15. It's only in the Bible one time. And the reason it's only in the Bible one time because there wouldn't be room for it again. It's eternity. Isaiah 57, 15. For thus saith... Everybody look at it now. I'll give you a second to get settled down. For thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabiteth eternity. There's the only time in the Bible that word's mentioned. One time. One time. Whose name is holy... I dwell in the high and holy place with him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and revive the heart of the contrite ones. Is that, I was up here having prayer meeting last night and of course that's one reason why we feel such a good spirit in here this morning is no doubt the people were up here praying last night. A bunch of the men, several of the ladies were up here praying. And many times people go day and night, missionaries give up everything they have, preachers burn their self out going day in, day out, day in, day out. And sometimes people ask you the question, why do you go so much, push yourself so much, work so hard? And the answer that any preacher or any missionary or any worker will always give, if they're thinking right, is because... There's an eternity. I'm going to talk to you about forever and ever and ever. Here in this short breath that I've got, I'm going to try to tell about eternity. It's absolutely incomprehensible. You cannot imagine forever and ever and ever. I used to sit around and try to imagine it. Forever and ever and ever that way. Forever and ever and ever that way. Do you realize that every single person in this room will live... Forever and ever and ever and ever somewhere. Heaven or hell. The Bible only tells us there's two places that people go when they die. There's no such thing as purgatory. There never has been. There's no such word as that in this Bible. The Bible declares there's only two places that people go when they die. Heaven or hell. Everybody in here today is going to heaven or hell. Every single person. Every little boy. Every little girl. And you're not just only going there, but you'll stay there forever and ever and ever. The Bible tells us about heaven in Revelation 22, 5 that they shall reign forever and ever. The Bible tells us about people who are not saved in Matthew 25, 46. These shall go away into everlasting punishment. Eternity is all that matters. If a man lived 60 years down here, listen to me now, if a person lived 80 years down here, or let's say 100 years down here, if he lived, let's say, from this plant to this plant, or from this plastic to this plastic, represented 100 years. Alright, there's 100 years. There's 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. Then die. Look what you've got waiting on you. million years. Ten million years. A hundred million years. A billion years. Ten billion years. One hundred years is not much compared to eternity. I've heard people say, man, I'm going to live it up. Cool, man. What's happening, baby? Let's party, man. We're going to do our own thing. Who cares? We're going to hell. Huh? Boy, you're not thinking straight. You ain't got good sense talk like that. The biggest party you ever been in your life ain't gonna last more than three days. Old John Belushi, they shot him full of cocaine about 24 to 30 times, 
30 times, I believe, the last 24 hours of his life. And he said, we're going to get higher than we've ever got. We're going to live it up. Now he's in eternity. What happened to Bon Scott of ACDC who wrote the song, Highway to Hell? You know what he said? He said, no stop signs. No speed limits. Nobody is going to slow me down. He said, I'm going to do my own thing. I'm going to party. I don't care what nobody said. Just a few weeks after he wrote that song, he's partying too heavy night. One night went like that. And right now he's in eternity. He's in eternity. You hear me? You don't get out. You don't get out. When you go to heaven or hell, you don't get out. You're there forever and ever and ever. Now listen, I'm going to be real brief and straight to the point. So give me your attention for like 15 minutes real closely. Number one, the definition of eternity. There was a deaf pupil in Paris gave it this definition. Quote, it is the lifetime of the Almighty. What a definition of eternity. Other people gave it these definitions. Duration, without beginning, without ending. Somebody else said, an ever abiding presence. Somebody else said, existence without bound or dimension. Present without past or future. Youth without infancy or old age. Life without birth or death. Today without yesterday or tomorrow. It just is always. That's what eternity is. When you think of eternity, you're thinking of something that has no beginning and no ending. From everlasting to everlasting. We measure everything we do by time. We come to church at a certain time. We go to work at a certain time. We go to school. We can't even imagine what it would be like to be in eternity. Let me say secondly this morning the reason for eternity. God had a reason for making it this way. And the reason is, of course, because without eternity, this life that you and I live in would make absolutely no sense at all. That's why it's so hard to understand. When people are in the world, they have a loved one die, and they have something terrible happen at home, or they have something terrible happen at their job, then they wind up with cancer, they wind up in a car wreck, they say this life don't make sense. Without eternity, life makes no sense. If there was no forever and ever, this life would be totally meaningless. It's so hard to understand. It's just a circle. You spend the day in trifle and disappointment, lay down at night and fall off to sleep with dreams and broken thoughts and wild imaginations that were as a tale that is told. There has to be more to it than this. It will change your views if you look at eternity. It's, you see a lot of people that work hard all their life. They try to pay their bills. They're honest. They, they try their best to do good. One bad thing right after another happens to them. They wind up losing everything they got and suffer and die a terrible death. Explain that. You got another fellow over here who deserts his wife and family when he's 28 years old. He goes to Las Vegas, gets him a job, makes a gambler, gets rich, lives a wicked lifestyle. Everything he touches turns to gold. Nothing bad ever happens to him. And he dies of old age with no pain at all. You know how you explain that? Eternity is going to settle it up. God's going to straighten it out one day after it's over. Life wouldn't even be fair if there were not an eternity. I, I visited a dear lady in the hospital the other day. It was so pitiful. Uh, uh, the other morning, me and Mo John, and she was laying there and I felt so sorry for her. She was laying there on her side like this and I grabbed her hand. She, I don't know how old she was, way up maybe, maybe uh, getting, getting close to the time for her to go. I don't know. She thought she was anyway. She said, I can't breathe. She said, Preacher, I can't breathe. And she's just so sweet. And I, she kept saying, I can't breathe. I'm smothering to death. She said, I ain't got long and things like that. And I felt my heart go out to that dear lady as she laid there. And I sure was glad to be able to look at the face of that dear lady in suffering and pain, hardly able to get another breath and tell her that there's something better waiting on her out on the other side. But what we get over there, it's not going to wear out either. And it's never going to grow old. There's never going to be no rest homes in heaven. No hospital rooms and or, or ambulances or the EMS. There won't be no 911 to dial over yonder in that great city of God. I mean, but it's just going to be perfectly happy and peace forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Do you know every movie star in Hollywood he's talking about Michael Jackson? Isn't that pitiful? Well, you know what he really wants? He wants to be happy. You know what they do out there in Hollywood? 
They built them a great big house. You know, I've been down Rodeo Drive and I've been down, saw, go around Beverly Hills and they showed me where the stars was when I was preaching out there. And boy, I've seen what them people do. They try to build a great, 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 great big old house, put big fence around it. And inside there's plenty of plants and water. Plants and water and flowers. Water squirting up like this. Security. Flowers growing. You know what that is, don't you? That is a cursed Garden of Eden. And they said, we're going to have it just like Adam and Eve had. Adam and Eve had it made, see? And we're trying our best to build what they love. But you can't have it. All you've got to do is get right with the Lord and we're going to get it one of these days. We're going to get it one of these days and we're going to get it forever and ever and ever. There was an old preacher sitting one time and a bunch of people was in a room talking. He sat there and he got real quiet and he got quieter and he just sat there and stared for a long time. And finally somebody said, Preacher, preacher, what are you thinking about? And he looked up and he said, Oh, friends, consider what it is to be forever with the Lord. Forever! Forever! Boy, he just got carried away with that idea of being forever and ever and ever with the Lord. When you think about eternity, persecution is not so bad. Christian young man was dragged to be beheaded through the streets many, many years ago. And they, back then, boy, they treated Christians bad. They still do in some parts of the world. And they were dragging him through the streets. They were going to cut his head off his body for his professed faith in Jesus Christ. They took that young man there and they said while he was dragging him through the streets, he met his dear mother. And his mother come and knelt down beside him and said, Son, son, remember eternity. Look up to heaven. You are not losing your life. You're just exchanging it for a better life. And boy, that little boy went up there and laid his head down on that chopping block and gladly gave up this life for that next life. You say, well, it's not fair the way we get treated. Well, God's going to even it all up one of these days in eternity. The Lord, you're not missing anything in this world when you give up your life for a life that's far better and far greater. But I want to talk just a few minutes before I'm through this morning about the length of eternity. And what I'd like to do is by comparison show you how long we're going to be in heaven or how long a person would be in hell. In hell there's fire and it burns all the time. The Bible says that it's a place where the worm don't die and the fire's not quenched and it's just burning and burning and burning forever. You saw, I'm sure, as I saw the other night when that plane crashed out in the Los Angeles airport. And I've landed in them U.S. airs many a time. And I, I was thinking, that thing landed safely. And that little plane was in its way and that big one just smashed that little one, just obliterated it. And then it veered off the course of the runway and crashed into that building. Last count I heard, they still weren't sure exactly how many people had been killed. But they said that plane, that U.S. airplane, just burst into flames. You know, I thought about that. All them times I fly, right when we're landing, I say, now Lord, help us get down there safely. And then as soon as we hit the ground, you think, ah, and you start grabbing for your suitcase and stuff like that. But these people were safely on the ground and then they hit that other plane and the plane blew up. They said it was flames all over it. And I just tried to imagine how I would feel if I was sitting on that thing and all of a sudden I heard a big boom and there was gas flames shot all over me, wouldn't that be a horrible way to go? Do you think about, you think about this. If a person was not saved, you think about all of a sudden hearing that big loud boom. Then you see him flames and feeling flames and you screaming, oh God, no, oh God, no, oh God, no. Then everything going black. And then as soon as it goes black, you feel something grab a hold of one arm. You feel something grab a hold of another arm. You feel a chain wrapped around your arm or your leg. You hear some voices laughing and start dragging you down. And you start saying, no, 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 what's happening? No, no, don't do this to me. Then you smell a smell like you've never smelled before. And boy, you see these big gates open up and there's nothing but just a great big pit for it looks like 10,000 miles. And you see people falling and screaming and cursing. You see people that were out partying last night that are down there rolling around and screaming saying, God, no, God, no, God, no. And then you hear a voice come over and say, don't, 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 you can't never get out. You're here forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. That's what will happen to a person 
that's not saved today. This, this ain't no joke, man. We're not playing games here today. You're either saved or you're not saved. If you died on the way home today, it'd be heaven or hell, one of those two. And you know how long you're going to stay there? A hundred years. You say you still think, well, why wouldn't we just burn up? Because God let your soul stay in hell or heaven and it don't ever die. And God gives you a body that never burns up. I've had people say, how come you don't just burn until your sins are paid for and then burn up and, and be non-existent and, and go out of, out of consciousness and die? I'll tell you why. Because you never do get your sins paid for. You can pay and pay and pay and pay and pay and never pay for sin. There's only one thing that can pay for sin. That's the blood of Jesus. When Jesus shed His blood on the cross, that paid for sin. But if you don't accept that, you have to go to hell forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. You say, boy, I tell you what, we've done messed up today. We've done gone into one of them churches where the preacher's a hellfire and damnation preacher. Is there? I didn't know there was any other kind. There ain't in the Bible. There ain't in the Bible. Jesus Christ was the best preacher and greatest man that's ever lived. And He talked about hell all the time through the Gospel. And He said, you'd be better off to cut your hand off or pluck your eye out. And it'll get you in a, a, a place where you can go to heaven and get saved rather than to go to hell in good hell. I'll tell you how long you're going to be there. When I think about this this morning, I want to illustrate it before I close. Tell you how long you'll be there. You hear the demons scream. You hear the devil laugh. You hear them make fun of you as you fall into hell. And you say, how long is this going to last? Let me illustrate it for you. you say, I can't do it in years. You don't think about it good enough. Let me think, illustrate it like this. Think about it like this. If you took a solid steel ball, solid steel, all the way through, not hollow on the inside, solid steel, the size of this earth, planet earth, you took a little red ant off the ground and placed it on that solid steel ball and let it begin to crawl around. Let that ant crawl around on that solid steel ball until it wore it down and wore it down and wore it down the size of a marble. That'd take a long, long time, wouldn't it? But when that was done, eternity is still not over. You're still there. You take a violent snowstorm. Let's imagine a snowstorm. Let's think about it like this. Now, if there was a snowstorm that reached from Texas to the coast of North Carolina, it reached half of the United States, 1,000 miles long, one foot deep. Think about it. 1,000 miles of snow, one foot deep. If one of those snowflakes melted and then a 1,000 years went by, and another snowflake melted, and then a thousand years went by, and another snowflake melted, and then a thousand years went by, and another snowflake melted, it would take a long time for all those millions and millions and billions of snowflakes to melt. But when all of that snow had finally melted, you'll look up and say, God, am I going to get out of here now? God, are you going to let me out? And there's a voice that said, No, eternity has only begun. We're a fool to do what we want to in this life and spend an eternity in hell for a few short years of pleasure down here. You took one ray of sun that I've ever shone from the sun since the beginning of time and let one ray of sun shine for one year each. When it's over with, eternity will have only begun. If you went down to the ocean this morning, the Atlantic Ocean, and you took one drop of the ocean on your finger, and you brought it up here to North Carolina, and you dropped it, and you drove in your car back down to, to Wilmington, and got another drop of water on your finger, and brought it up here and dropped it, it would take a long, long time to get all that water out of that ocean. You could do that. It's impossible. But if it can be done, you took out one drop at a time, people would still be just as alive and conscious and well in hell and heaven as they were the day they get there. There's no end. If you took a grain of sand off the beach down there, 
and a bird could get it in his mouth and flew to the to the moon, let's say, and dropped that grain of sand. And he flew all the way back down to earth, went down to Carolina Beach and up Myrtle Beach and went all the way down to Daytona Beach and took another grain of sand. Turned around, flew all the way back and dropped it on the moon. Turned around, come back. And he did one grain every 1,000 years. It would take a long, long time before you could even tell he scooped out as much as a handful. It would take a long, long time before you could ever tell a bucket full had been moved or a, or a scoop off of a bulldozer or a, or a backhoe or a load, front end loader. I'm telling you, if that bird moved all those grains of sand one at a time, one every thousand years, and then turned around and moved them all back to the earth, and then turned around and moved them all back a million times, when all of that time is over, people are still in hell. People are still in heaven. I'm talking eternity this morning. Nothing else matters. They're not ready to go into eternity today. It's crazy. It's crazy to live your life. If Adam were still alive today, Adam and Eve, if Adam were still alive today, being punished for his sin, being beat, he'd never have his sin paid for. No one can commute it. Nobody can compute it. Nobody can, nobody can tally it up and total it. God created one in this world if God had created one atom at a time, I'm talking about A-T-O-M, one atom at a time, and after a million years, create another atom, and after a million years, create another atom, molecules, and then create everything like that, eternity will have only begun. You say, well, Brother Danny, we sure got to live down here a long time. Fifty years isn't a long time. 75 years isn't a long time. Sister Opal sitting here this morning. Clinton just passed away the other day. They were married 40 years, wasn't it? 41 years. 40 years. She said, Brother Danny, it didn't seem like two years. I know there's somebody that's been married two and it seems like 40. But she said, we've married 40 years. Seemed like two. The older I get, the more I look back and see how fast your life goes by. But when you get into eternity, it'll never go by. All you teenagers, listen to me this morning. You know why we you know why all this, this building was built here? I mean, you think we done this just because we like it? You know why we put our sweat and money and almost our blood into putting this building here? You know why we run those buses all over McDowell County and Hyper Burke County and Rutherford County and everywhere this morning? So all these teenagers over here in this section. They all come, most of them come on our buses. There was 222 of them you see over there on buses this morning. You know why we did that? And you know why the church pays for all that? And puts gas in them buses and buys tires and puts tags on them? Because we know that those kids are going to have a short life down here and then they're going into eternity forever and ever and ever. And boy, that puts a drive inside of you to want to reach them, to want to do something, to help people. Eternity is what matters, folks. Read you this little poem this morning. These are facts that are true. Could this poem be meant for you? Read a little and you will see what Satan has for you and me. A pretty picture he will show. The ugly part he'll hide. Like what I'm talking about this morning. You will never see, my precious friend, what's on the other side. He'll tell you to live it up. You're young and full of life. But never turn me back, friend. Or he'll pull the knife. Before too long, he's got your soul. To hell with it he'll go. There'll be no mercy there, my friend. There'll be no rock and roll. Oh yes, weird noises will be heard. You'll think you've lost your mind. Wild and crazy sounds you'll hear. It won't be ACD, BC this time. The preacher warned me of this place. How hot the flames would be. I laughed it off and continued on. My God, now look at me. The laughter's stopped. The fun is gone. My soul cries out in pain. Jesus, please have mercy. I promise I'll change. But then a voice so cruel and loud begin to laugh at me. The mercy ceased. The love is gone. With God you'll never be. 
You had your chance to make it right, to live and get right, rid of your sin. You refused to walk with God and let the Savior in. You did just what I told you to. Now with me you'll ever be. You'll burn with fire and cry with pain for all eternity. There'll be no drugs to make you high, no rock to make you roll, no friends, no movies, no cars, no dates. I'll be in control, says the devil. Ha ha, I'll laugh when you begin to scream. The pain you'll feel is beyond your wildest dream. Suicide? Forget it. Down here, you cannot die. A holy life you should have chose, but you chose to live a lie. You could have walked on streets of gold, a mansion to be old. On earth, you thought about many things, but you would never think of your soul. Eighty-three people die every minute. While I've been preaching, there's been hundreds die. It's coming to every one of us in here today. Like that, you're just waiting your time. If I was in your shoes, if I was a high school student, if I went to junior high, if I was here and I was 50 years old or 60 years old, and I knew that there was an eternity waiting on me, I wouldn't care. I wouldn't, who cares what people at school make? What difference does it make? Big deal, brother. Big deal. There was a big old fire out there in the road this morning, and we was all walking toward it. You think I'd say, Well, I'm not going to turn around because I'm afraid they'd laugh at Let them laugh. Let them laugh. They're not going to be laughing one of these days. It's going to turn right around. May God have mercy on me this morning. Think about eternity. If you're here today, you don't know for a fact that you're ready to meet the Lord. Why don't you get ready this morning? Let's stand by our heads. Every head bowed, every eye closed this morning. I'm going to ask you a question before we pray. ready to meet the Lord? Are you? Are you ready to meet the Lord just like you are this morning? Huh? Is God speaking to you today? I wonder if there would be someone here this morning. We're not going to tarry long. But I just want to give a short invitation. We're going to let you go. There will be someone here this morning and say, Brother Danny, it scared me. He was talking about forever and ever and ever. It scared me. And I'm not right with the Lord. And I want you and this church to pray for me. I don't want to make that terrible, fatal, eternal mistake of going into eternity without God. I don't want to stay in hell forever and ever and ever with no hope or peace or way out. Please pray for me. Please pray for me. Would you just raise your hand and take it right back down. We'll pray for you this morning. Anybody? God bless you, sir. God bless you. God bless you, ma'am. Anybody else? God bless you. I see your hand back there. God bless you, young man. Anybody else? Anybody else? Let's raise your hand. We're not going to come to you. We're not going to embarrass you. We're not going to put you on the spot. We're just going to pray for you. That's all we're going to do. Anybody else? Just slip it up. No one's looking around. Just slip it up and say, Brother Danny, I don't want to go to hell. I want the church to pray for me. Just raise your hand. Take it right back down. We'll pray for you this morning. Anybody else? Right quickly. Amen. God bless you too. I see you boys. I see your hand. And you've done the right thing this morning. Listen, what else matters? Okay. God bless you. I see your hand over there. God bless you. I see your hand, young man. Amen. Nothing else matters, friend. There ain't nothing else matters. What can you tell me that would matter any more than what I've talked about this morning? Nothing. Nothing. That's where it's at. That's where the real action is. Being ready for eternity. Dear God in heaven, I pray this morning for this great crowd of people that's here. Lord, I don't even know where all of them come from. Lord, I thank you for bringing them in. I thank you for drawing them in this morning. Praise your holy name. Lord Jesus, I pray that you'd help these that lifted their hands. Lord, I thank you for them being honest. Thank you for them being under conviction and concern. 
And now I pray that you'd help them to do something about it. Help them to make it right before they leave this place today. Lord, help them not to go out of here not knowing where they're going to spend eternity. Lord, we hadn't even scratched the surface of it. If we added up all these illustrations that I gave today and multiply them 10 million times each, it still wouldn't even begin to describe eternity. Dear God, help them to come this morning and get things right with you. Not be ashamed. Do it this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to sing this morning just as I am without one plea. That thy blood was shed for me. O Lamb of God, I come. If you want to come to Jesus, if you want to get your heart right with God this morning,